Welcome. I'm the Word Nerd, and this is kind of the Cost Ministries. Let's dig deeper. Today, we're digging deeper into 2 Timothy 4, 2 through 5, and we're actually going to be doing some verse mapping on my tablet. So, yeah, we're just going to jump right in here. So, this is actually what I would call an apologetic um, scripture, and the first one that I did was actually... A while ago which is first Peter 3 15 through 16 I'll try to link that video go watch that one um, but it basically talks about um, be all be ready always to give an answer for anyone that asks you for the hope um, given answers actually one word in the Greek which is apologia which where we get apologetic from in English so yeah, so let's jump into 2 Timothy. So, of course, we're doing background, and you can see on the left right there that I have my uh, How to Study the Bible Cheat Sheet. Link will be in the description. It is a free PDF download. All right, so the author is Paul. Recipient is Timothy. All this is found in verses 1 and 2. The literary style is an epistle, which is in a letter, basically. Um, it's giving instruction. And when was it written? Um, modern critical scholars, I found dated pretty late from 90 to 140 AD. All the other um, sites or references that I found um, do from 63 AD to 68 and most say 67 AD. So just FYI. So let's jump into some scripture. Verses 2, preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. So preach is to advocate earnestly to deliver publicly. Herald is to give notice or announcement. So preaching is not just done by a pastor or an evangelist. It should be done in your everyday life, which is basically advocate Jesus. So the word is Jesus, God's word, the Bible, the gospel. You are to advocate earnestly for your faith, for Jesus, for God and the Bible. I mean, that's what we're called to do as followers of Jesus. Um, I know this is written to Timothy specifically, but this can do to all disciples of Jesus. Um, so, in, so be instant. So instant is appearing in or as if ready to use form. So you should be ready pretty much all the time. <laughs> you should be ready to be used by God. So when should you be ready? In season, which is a suitable or natural time or occur occasion at the right time or conveniently. Conveniently is suited to personal comfort or easy performance. So you should be, you know, in season. Now, out of season is not in season. So basically, it, when it's not suitable for you, when it's not a natural time or occasion, when it's not the right time, and when it's inconvenient. So it's not suited to your personal comfort level or it's easy to um, do so. Sometimes it's going to be hard and you might get persecuted or it's just going to be, you're going to have a bad day and God's going to be like, hey, not everything's about you. You know, like you still need to be sharing Jesus. Um, so you need to be ready, whether it's convenient or whether it's inconvenient for you. You need to be ready at all times. Um, so what exactly should you be doing? Reprove is one of them, which is to correct gently or with kindly intent. You know, I think some people... Um, forget that it is okay to correct people especially if they call themselves a christian and if you call yourself a christian and you do not like being corrected i'm confused because god says that he's going to correct you and he could use someone for that like i said it says gently or kindly so definitely do it with love don't do it rudely or um you know being inconsiderate um but you do need to correct people a uh, rebuke so it could be rebuke is to consider the character or conduct of and judge accordingly and uh, ascribe guilt to so most people are going to be like whoa i'm going to be like look in romans three nineteen, it says now we know that with things 
So ever the law saith, it saith to them that are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. We have to know that we're guilty before we know that we need a Savior. So guilt is okay when you understand that you are guilty and you need a Savior to save you. Now you shouldn't continue and be in guilt um, after you are saved, but you should understand that you are guilty and I think just because you know you're doing wrong doesn't necessarily mean you understand that you're guilty I think knowledge doesn't equal understanding I think some people forget that um which is a truth that God showed me not too long ago so the next thing is exhort so exhort is to incite by argument or advice urge strongly basically like to encourage is to attempt to persuade urge or to spur on so basically after you rebuke someone you want to exhort them you want to give them evidence with scripture and urge strongly to keep on going to urge them to be like look you are wrong but repent and really follow god um, so it's kind of like what you need to do in that order. Correct, rebuke, exhort, right? So in all long suffering, so all is the whole amount, quantity, or extent of. Long suffering is patiently enduring lasting offense or hardship. Patient is bearing pains or trials calmly or without complaint. Steadfast despite opposition, difficulty, or adversary. So... It's not going to be easy, um, this preaching thing, um, basically, which is you can preach through your life, but definitely use your words as well. But it's a lifelong thing you're going to be preaching because you want to see people saved. And yeah, it's going to be hard. You're going to be going through hardships yourself and in your own family, and you're going to hit difficulty and even people that oppose you. Um, but also... Uh, with all long suffering and doctrine. So you should be preaching the entire doctrine of God, which a doctrine is something that is taught or a principle or position or the body of principles in a branch of knowledge or system of belief. Basically like instructions or direction. So instructions is a direction calling for compliance and direction is guidance of action and conduct. And you need to really be preaching on all of that, like not just get stuck on one thing. Um... In general when especially if you're dealing with um, people that call themselves Christians or even maybe Christians that are not as mature as you you still need to be teaching those things that um, all of it that is in God sorry for about my head right there um, so yeah uh, we're gonna jump into verse um, 3 um, verse 3 says, For the time will come when, the wi when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Um, so we're going to jump in and do some definitions. Um, the first one is endure. So endure is to continue in the same state, last, remain firm under suffering or misfortune without yielding and it says they will not endure so that's just a sad and scary thing they won't endure what sound doctrine sound is basically free from error firm um, free from fallacy or misapprehension um, exhibiting or based on thorough knowledge and experience, logically valid and having true premises, showing good judgment or sense. And the thing is, uh, we already um, define doctrine, um, but like you see that today, people's doctrines and beliefs are, can seem crazy. I'm like, how in the world did you even come to that conclusion? How could you even think that that is true? It's just it's just crazy like you need to stick with the bible like and i understand that people can misinterpret the bible and sometimes i think people tr wholeheartedly don't realize that they are misinterpreting the bible um but that's why it's so important to make sure you're reading in context make sure um you know just all of the how to study things that i hopefully teach is to help that we do interpret correctly all right so the next thing is uh 
but after their own lust. So lust is intense longing, craving, desire, or pleasure. They shall heap. Heap is to pile or collect in great quantity. So basically because of their own lust and pleasure and desires that they want, they're going to in a large quantity uh, give themselves to teachers having itching ears. They are giving themselves to, so itching is to have a rel a re oh my gosh, a re restless desire or hankering for something and ears is a sense or act of hearing. So they want to hear things that um, go with what they want, uh, go with what their pleasures are, which are normally sin. Um, so, cause they're not going to endure sound doctrine. So it ain't going to be good stuff. It's going to be bad stuff. Probably, um, people that teach that it's okay to sin. Everyone sins. Like it's okay to do these things. God still loves you. Yeah. God still loves you, but he's not going to be okay with sin. Like sin separates you from God. Um, so it's just, it's just a lot, you know, like you can see that these days that trying to get good sound doctrine um it's hard to find like don't just listen to anyone including me like you know test what i'm saying test what you know my videos are about and things but um all i want is to give glory to him and teach what he has um revealed so in his word verse four and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned to fables um, and they shall turn away. Turn away is to refuse admittance or acceptance to reject, dismiss, depart. So they're going to just probably dismiss and reject things um, that they are hearing. Um, um, they don't even want the truth. The truth is the body of real facts, events, um, the property of being in accord with fact or reality. They don't care about reality. They don't care what's really true. Um, they are turned to fables. So turned is to direct or point toward something, um, toward or away from something, convert. So they want, they're fine with fables, which is a fiction, a lie, falsehood. They are fine with being um, converting to fables or fiction because it suits their needs and their cravings and their sins, basically. Um, verse 5, but watch thou in all things, endure affliction, do the work of evangelists, make full proof of thy ministry. So it says, but watch. Watch is to keep vigil or devotional exercise, be attentive or vigilant, keep guard to keep someone or something under close observation. In all things. So we're to be vigil, we're to be vigilant and attentive to all all things that has to do with our faith endure affliction we've already uh defined endure but affliction is a cause or persistent pain uh or distress like there's going to be persistent pain and distress um sufferings that we're going to have to go through like it's it's almost like a promise like that's going to happen like endure it like it's not the end of the world because we know that we win in the end. I read the back of the book. We win. We go to paradise. Like, it, it's, it's okay. <laughs> um, do the work of an evangelist. So, work is to perform work or full duties to exert oneself physically or mentally, especially in sustained effort for a purpose or under compulsion or necessity. Um, so, make sure you're fulfilling your full duties um, as whatever God has called you to be. And we're all called to be, to evangelize, to spread the gospel. Evangelist is a person who preaches the gospel. Like I said, it's not going to be look the same for every person, but you definitely need to be preaching the gospel some way, somehow. Whether that is in a church, being a pastor, an evangelist, going to different churches, um, you know, talking one-on-one -on -one to people, handing out gospel tracts. Um, I don't really care how, but everyone needs to be preaching the gospel um make full proof of thy ministry so make full proof is actually one word in the greek and it's to bring into being as many or much um evidence so evidence is an outward sign so basically it's um saying make f uh 
show the outward sign of the evidence of your ministry make sure that it is seen and ministry is the services provided to people so ministry is the things that you're doing for god and people and serving god and serving people in that um making sure that there is an outstanding make sure um you know there's evidence for what you're doing okay so we're gonna jump into the next steps so that's observation um, getting the definitions we did the background and getting defining words and the next thing is to get context so context here is that Paul is speaking to Tim- Timothy about the duties at, of a servant of God um, so as a servant of God I can take from this and learn from this this is things that I should be doing and that should be a part of me as well um we have some cross references like I say on all these videos I can't go through every single cross references we would be here forever this video is already long um but pause and write down these cross references put them in your bible read them and see why they're cross references all right um, but it's 1 Peter 3, 15 through 16, Colossians 1, 28 through 29, 1 Thessalonians 2, 11 through 12, and 1 Thessalonians 5, 14, Titus 1, 13, Titus 2, 15, 2 Timothy 2, 25, and Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. Like I said, write these down, check them out, um, find your own cross references. I'm sure there's more, um. But cross reference are important. It helps you give insight on scripture and your interpretation and things. But I just don't have time to go through that on these videos. All right, let's jump into truths that I got out of this scriptures. Um, trials, afflictions, and hardships are going to come. You're going to have to go through them. Um, people will reject logic and truth for lies. Um, that's just you can see that even today like people don't care um they don't care about truth they care about how they feel more than truth um and there's always work to be done so those are the truths that i got out of the scripture interpretation is basically um proclaiming the gospel should be a way of life and done continuously despite what you're going through um people will choose teachers who allow sinful desires to be okay and will and will willfully believe lives to be able to consider to continue in their own sin and their own desires and you can see that sometimes like um not everyone that is big but you know um that big preachers and things like that you know they say it's okay to sin and they're really popular because of that so so the next thing is application and i um application has a few steps so instructions that i get from these is basically verses two and five which is preach the word reprove rebuke watch out um endure um you know do the work of an evangelist um prayer that i have is help me to preach in all seasons and to do all my duties as your servant in jesus name like i've always said i'm pretty short and to the point when it comes to prayer like that's just how I am. I think God gets me because, you know, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. Anyway. And last but not least is what God is saying to me as I'm studying this. Um, so this part is going to be different for each and every person. This is a personal thing. I think God can say something through scripture um, something different with the same scripture just by what season and what um, situation you may be going through um, but for me it's be ready to preach the gospel at all times um, so that's I mean that's really what he's saying like I don't really care what you're doing you need to be ready to do this and preach me so that is uh, what God's saying to me it'll be different for you so yeah, so that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you're inspired and encouraged to dig deeper into God's Word. If you verse map with me on these videos, or if you just verse map in general, I would love to see them. So check me out on my Instagram, at the official word nerd. Um, message me or tag me in your pictures. That would be awesome. 
um yeah thanks for leaving comments and thanks for liking the videos and really growing this channel thank you so much guys all glory goes to jesus so yeah i'll see you in the next one guys hope you enjoyed like i said hope you're inspired to dig deeper into god's word i'll see you in the next one bye